what the heck? Then I saw that Trello was leaking 15 million emails of users and their names and their emails and all of this. Like, how did this happen? I mean, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, indeed, um, Eric. So let's let's talk through what happened, right? So uh, Trello had an API endpoint uh, that allowed you to invite another user to your project, right? Pretty standard thing, a very good use case. Um, however, this API endpoint was left wide open, meaning no authentication, no password, no credentials required. And so what this uh, attacker uh, did was to try to access this API endpoint and just fire off different email addresses to see which ones would match. And when they did match, it was actually the first way that you could connect a public profile, which is whatever you want to have out there visible to a personal email address, right? And that was the, the big thing that happened here, right? Now your public profile is associated to your personal identifier. And that was really at the core of what happened here, Eric. And in the end, right, I guess it always, whenever these things come to light, so to speak, that now my email is known, right? I think then one of the big risks is now there are other data sets where the email is known, right? And then I think people can, even though you might say, well, what's the big deal with your email being leaked, right? But I think there are a lot of ripple effects that can, can oh. come from these kind of hacks, even though the individual data may not, not look as dramatic. Indeed. Um, this kind of thing, we see a, a few examples of this lately. Um, that public information tied to your personal information can be gold information from a phishing perspective, right? It's, it's helping those attackers, those scammers build a bigger picture of who you are and, and what you're into, what you're doing. But let's, <clears throat> let's double click on how 15 million got uh, exposed here, right? And so what this attacker did was they took long lists of known harvested exposed emails off the dark web and you know other breaches and just fired them off at the Trello API to the tune of 500 million attempts 500 million to find 15 million matches okay and so there's a lot here to dissect okay so let's talk about what what could have been done better here Right. And, and to be clear, Trello immediately responded. They fixed it. They addressed the issue. And, uh, and I don't think there's a concern anymore. But how did this happen? OK, flaw number one, no authentication on that endpoint. OK, so literally you could just fire off as many times as you want uh, anonymously. Um, they used, uh, you know, Trello had various rate limiting detection and protections, but this attacker bypassed it with proxy servers and IP rotation and all these kind of things to evade the rate limiting detection. Um, so there, the fact that they had an unsecured endpoint made it difficult to identify where this traffic was coming from, right? So the fix was require users to authenticate even when they're using this API. That immediately made this almost impossible to pull off. Right. Um, yeah, yes, you could go create a free account and activate the, the API, but that's a whole lot of work. You're not going to create 500 million accounts. That's probably going to get discovered. And and now they could rate limit on a per user. Right. They could say, all right, all these 500 million uh, requests are coming from the same user. They don't have to worry if they're rotating IP addresses or using proxies or anything like that. But I'm also thinking it also would have been almost enough, right? If, if they had just had a better overall view and instead of just rate limiting individual um, on individual clients, they would just look at the overall volume, right? And say, yeah. it's like, oh, we're getting, I don't know, like a hundred times the volume that we usually get on that endpoint. So maybe we should have a look. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? Some, some sort of anomaly detection say, you know, like what's going on here, right? Even if they try to rate limit it, I mean, 500 million, you're going to have to you know, send a few million every day, right? <laughs> Just to, to get there in, in a year's time, right? So, so no, I think some sort of like overall detection of, of anomalous traffic or high, high volumes of traffic should have tipped them off, right? Long before the, 
the the breach got announced and 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 published. So yeah, I think there's something to be said there. But I think the 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 main thing though that that I would say is by by introducing authentication to that endpoint really made that attack much much harder to pull off right um because now you would have to create all of these zombie accounts that would certainly get discovered people wouldn't would notice that um and so so yeah I, I think you know there are two issues here right there's the unsecured endpoint and then there's the the unrestricted access to that endpoint um, which both happen to map to OWASP top 10 items that that was my next question right it's like if if you were following let's say recommended best practices that's something you probably should have noticed in some shape or form, right? Where if you either use some some tooling or some some review process, where somebody might have said, "Wait a minute, <laughs> like isn't that maybe problematic?" Yeah, and and um, I always like to connect these these real world scenarios to some of the best practices that are out there. And the OWASP API Security Top Ten is is as good a a place to start. Um, really, industry standard for for understanding these kinds of things. So, so what are we talking about here in the in the top ten? So, number two, um, broken authentication, right? This is defined as weak or poor um, authentication of APIs. You know, weak password requirements, brute forcing exposure, credential stuffing. But honestly, Eric, what I see more often than not with 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 broken auth is no auth, right? Like there's a complete lack of authentication, right? It's not like they brute forced their way in. It was just left wide open, right? And we see that quite a lot. So that's number two. Number four on the OWASP top 10 is unrestricted resource consumption, right? And that here we're talking about, it used to be called lack of rate, uh, resource and rate limiting. Um, and that's what we're talking about here, right? You got to detect these kinds of brute force activities, um, be able to control it, mitigate it, block those, those sources. Um, that would have at least uh, limited the damage and, and probably prevented any further damage. Uh, so yeah, uh, OWASP number two, broken auth number four, unrestricted resource consumption. And if you looked at like, I mean, API observability is a big thing these days. So everybody's talking about observability, which which I guess should also cover these kind of things. Would you say that people who are, let's say, a little bit more sensitive to that idea of observability and have some tooling in place that for them, at least the risk uh, of being part of such a breach would be a lot lower? Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely want to be monitoring, right? And so observability means a few different things. Like n number one, there's not a, there wasn't a discovery problem here, right? It's not like this was some rogue or shadow or unknown API. This was very well known. It was probably documented. Um, so no worries here that, you know, there was some, you know, rogue engineer publishing APIs that no one knows about. That That's not an issue here. But observability in terms of like monitoring, absolutely, right? And if you think about even... You don't even need probably special technologies, right? You're, you're, most organizations employ web app firewalling, things like that. That's real good um, technology for looking for um, high volume attacks and the like, um, or using an API gateway, right? That's another way to, 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 to get that visibility. But um, it can be tricky to, to implement the right kind of rate limiting, right? This person was spraying their traffic across a lot of different IP addresses, might have been difficult to fingerprint, you know, the clients that these were coming from. Um, so rate limiting is, you know, probably as much art as science. And so um, I really think by introducing the the authentication to that endpoint, then the attacker would have to provide some credential and they would be able to now connect the dots between all these requests, even if they were using 10, 100, 1000 different credentials to get the 500 million, you'd still be seeing an excessive amount of requests coming from any one of those. Okay, so yeah, I think, you know, that's like an, an another interesting case in our what the heck series. And it's always interesting, you know, to, to go from these headlines and look a little bit at, you know, what happened, what would have prevented that from happening. And I think that's a good opportunity then to tell everybody, go and check your APIs against OWASP. It's never a bad idea to do that. Yeah, no, it's not. And and a uh, little little shameless plug here. Uh, if you want to learn all about the OWASP API top ten, um, I don't think there's any better place. Uh, obviously, the OWASP site itself, but um, we've actually got a course dedicated to the OWASP API top ten on appysecuniversity.com, taught by my good friend Corey Ball, who also happens to be 
the author of Hacking APIs. So uh, a couple of plugs there, but uh, all the courses free. Um, you get your certificates and badges there and uh, definitely recommend people come check it out. Okay, we'll link to that course from the description. And um, so if you're interested in doing that, go and check it out. And with that, we're done for today. So thanks a lot for this episode of What the Heck, Dan? Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to more. And yeah, thanks everybody for watching. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, con consider subscribing. And until next time, there will be more hacks. We can guarantee that. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>